Hi, everybody. Reese Davis with you, bringing you the EA Sports NCAA Football 14 pregame show presented by Nissan. Innovation that excites. The Cougars have shown few signs of weakness lately. They are exuding confidence in everything they do. String together a few Ws, that's exactly what happens. We'll see if they can keep it up. Thanks for joining us here on the NCAA College Football pregame show. Now let's send it out to Brad and Kirk for all the action. We'll see you at the half. Texas and Alex head down to the coin toss and is brought to you by Coke Zero. Real Coca-Cola taste and zero calories. Enjoy everything. Robinson's Nolan is lined up to kick this one off and you can feel the thunder in the crowd as they await the start of this game. And it goes into the end zone, down for a touchback. The quarterback leads the team out on the field for the first drive. Second and ten. Ball on the 25-yard line. Empty backfield, quarterback in the gun. Five wide receivers. Steps out of bounds at the 28-yard line. They come out on an empty backfield. He scrambled. He dives and he'll be marked down. He kept churning his legs, trying to grind out those last few feet, but the defense just held him. He makes it out to maybe the 46-yard line. Houston's offense really centered around this quarterback, and as he goes, the team seems to go, Kirk. Brad, over the weeks, I've been watching him on film, and one thing I've seen is his ability to make good decisions. I mean, time after time, he just avoids the mistakes, and when you can do that as a quarterback and as a leader of an offense, you're going to move the football down the field. Wears it out to the right to the halfback, and he's taken down at the 49-yard line. That'll make it second to seven. And he's tackled at the 41 yard line. There's very good chemistry between these two. They like to run through all their routes before the game. And I have to say, they look sharp before this one even started. Fires it out. They'll bring him down to the 37 yard line. And down he goes at the 22-yard line. Nothing tentative on that run at all. He looked very determined and got the first down. two-yard line. It's second down. Slings it. Tackle right around the 22-yard line. He 
He's under pressure. Houston's got a guy that's in a running for a national award here, Herbie. And, you know, the best time to talk about awards really is after you win them. Right now, it's all speculation. He's just got to play the game. It's fourth down. So the field goal unit is on the field. They'll try for three points. Houston could take the lead with this field goal. The kick is up, and they tack on three points. Reese Davis joins us in the studio with this update. Reese, what is happening in Waco? And for you, Kev, the misery index reaches eight with their eighth straight loss. And for Howell, more than a workmanlike effort today with four touchdowns. Best way to describe this kid, straight warrior. In another game, we take you out to a battle in the Big Ten where the action's always tough and hard-nosed. And for Michigan State, they've won two straight. Johnson's a confident presence in the passing game, and he threw for more than 200 yards in this one. The Spartans win it 30-27. to That's good stuff, Reese. Thank you. They line up to kick this one away. Sends it sailing downfield. This one's going to be down in the end zone for a touchback. The Cougars are right where they want to be early in this one. Well, this is what their coach talked about, getting off to a great start. The defense did their job, and it's nice to see the offense move the ball down the field and also get some points on the board. And while they are behind, they know they can knock things up in a heartbeat. It's way too early to change your game plan. Quick throw. He's tackled around the 42-yard line. Getting the ball to your tight end and allowing him to make plays in the passing game can really open things up on the outside for your real speedsters. Five guys will be out in the pattern as they're in the shotgun. He's on the run. He's at midfield. He's tackled in the open field. And they're going to put six DBs on the field to counter that five-receiver look. Now he tries to buy some time. And he's going to be sacked for a loss. I think that one's on the offensive line. They've got to do a better job of holding their blocks, or else this quarterback's going to be pulling turf out of his face mask all game. decisive at all on that option and once he kept it himself there was no place to go third down now and they need to get it down to the 34 fires to his tight end nothing good you know sometimes the toughest throws to make for a quarterback is when he has a wide receiver wide open and everybody in the stands is saying throw it throw it and you aim the football instead of just getting back in rhythm stepping and throwing and that time he aimed the ball and it was incomplete he gets out to about the 25 yard line made a few guys miss on his way to a quality return we're set to get restarted as the offense looks to build on the success of their field goal on the last drive. Houston has a three-point lead. Quick out to his receiver. Drop down around the 33-yard line. So they gain six yards on the play and pick up the first down. Heads up play by the quarterback to find his receiver in traffic and get the ball into his hands. Tackle made the 47-yard line. Fan of the play action pass in college football because the play action 
it really puts a lot of pressure on defense. The defense gets caught up and concerned about the running game, and it puts them out of position. And it makes the throwing lanes for the quarterback and the windows that he's trying to find much easier to find for a quarterback and a receiver to pick up big yards like we just saw there. From the 44-yard line, second down. He's knocked out of bounds around the 41-yard line. That makes it third and seven. Quick roll, almost intercepted. Since he's intended to see the play, that brings us fourth and seven. Houston holds a field goal lead. So this one goes into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. Houston's defense is playing lights out right now and pitching a shutout. Yeah, I would not be shocked at all to see this defense be able to maintain this. I, I just the way they're playing, the attitude that they seem to be playing with, if they can maintain the energy and the awareness of this offense, there's a very good shot that they could shut this offense out. Finds his man and they take him down immediately. That makes it seven and six. Fifteen minutes. Let's see if things open up in the second quarter. Three nothing, Cougar. Set to resume action here in the second quarter, and we've got a tight ball game. He's got it with room to run. Yard line. That's a gain of seven on the play. That'll bring up second and three. Check five, check five, five, six, five, six. Six man. Check for us, check for us, check for us. to about the 41 yard line. Well, that's the second time that this defense has given up a first down on third down. You work so hard as a defense to get an offense to third down. When you get them there, you've got to be able to have somebody step up and make a big play, whether it's a defensive tackle slipping through a block, a linebacker shooting a gap, a defender in the secondary that's able to make a play on a football. Somebody's got to make a play, and that's what winning, the difference between winning a football game and losing is how you play on third down. First down. Larry, Larry, Larry. Mike six. Mike six. Watch the curl. Watch the curl. Hey, kill, kill, kill. Orange three. Orange three. Go. And now he's got room to run. He's taken down at about the five yard line. That's good for the 14 yards. That makes it first. It's the ninth play of the drive. Taken down right around the 
two-yard line. package a well-deserved score and he converts the extra point a nice 10 play 79 yard drive and it's good for seven points Bryant gets set to kick this one away McCall from the eight and down he goes at the 29 yard line not sure what the flag is about here. Let's go down to the field and find out. Receiving team. Flipping is the call, and now they'll have to find a way to make up those yards right here. In a game that's this close, you can't afford to waste possessions. And he makes it out to about the 17-yard line. And he's going to come up with a sack. I think this defensive end is doing a great job of getting after the quarterback, not only with the sack in this case, but it seems like the entire game he's done a good job of creating pressure, making this quarterback feel him, and almost giving him happy feet back there where he doesn't seem to be in rhythm and almost seems to be throwing the football, feeling the, the pressure and almost creating nerves on the quarterback. So that sack leaves them with some work to do. It's third down and 14. Fires out quickly to the tailback, and he's tackled right around the 16-yard line. That's a gain of six on the play. Fourth down. Smith will be the return man. Pretty good job by the return man there. Momentum swings have been fairly even. And with so little separation, this game can be drastically changed on just one or two plays. Texas A&M is up four. He's got an opening. He's at the 20. Gets out to around the 12. And he's level at the 13-yard line. A one-yard loss. Pretty good stand there. They weren't fooled at all by the offensive play call. Two minutes to go in the half. Throw out to the receiver, incomplete. Quick strike to the receiver, touchdown. saw something upstairs it led to a touchdown you can thank the play calling there very impressive and the secondary didn't quite seem alert enough to defend that pass so they're going to try to determine if the receiver had possession and was inbounds or not so the referee initially calls it a catch but we'll get a second look at it here and determine if he was inbounds when he hauled it in and that play happened so fast that it was very tough to tell if he was able to get a foot down or not after, after review of the, the play the ruling, ruling on the, on the field, field stands, stands. So after some discussion, the call on the field stands. He splits the uprights with the extra point. Looks like 
they're ready for the kick. McCall from the three. And he's tackled at the 26-yard line. Not much luck the last time this offense had the ball. There are five wide receivers split out. The quarterback in the gun. Over the middle to his tailback. They'll bring him down around the 34-yard line. I think it was a great play call. It was very well executed. Any coach would be happy with that kind of outcome on a first or second down play. It's second down, and they're about two yards away from the sticks. And he throws it away. execution and again we've seen this before and the result is a big third down run throws quick to the receiver and it falls incomplete well that's a great play here by the defense getting pressure on the quarterback and the result is a bad throw these are the kind of plays that can really impact the football game because the defense can build some confidence after getting after a quarterback like that now he's scrambling and down he goes around the 39 yard line. That brings up third and 10. And they've got all their DBs in there to match up against the five wide set. Tackles around the 31 yard line. That'll make it fourth and two. It's fourth down. It looks like they're going to try for the long field goal. Kicks up. And he just drilled it from long range. That one looked like cake for this kid. Chalk up three points for the offense. 14-6, Texas A&M. Nolan has the ball set, and he looks ready to kick this one deep. He really got a hold of that kick. He's to the 20. He's pushed out of bounds around the 29-yard line. In a game that's this close, you can't afford to waste possessions. Texas A&M is up by eight. That's a great tackle. The 39-yard line. Excellent job by this young quarterback of making the defense pay for bringing both outside linebackers. That's composure right there. From their own 39-yard line. First down. He wants it all. Can't connect. That one sailed on him. He wanted his receiver, but I think that may have slipped out of his hands. That makes it second and ten. Three, nine, three, nine. Trying to set up a little screen, gets it to his tailback. And he hits him hard at the 46-yard line. Did you see how he looked that ball into his hands? That's how you catch a football. They need about three yards to get the first down here on third down. One more play now before we hit halftime, so they'll most likely throw one towards the end zone here. He airs it out. Missed him. Points were very hard to come by in those first two quarters. They'll head to the locker room. 14-6, Texas A&M. We've played 30 minutes. Glad to have you with us on the EA Sports NCAA Football 14 Halftime Show presented by Nissan. Innovation that excites. 
David Pollock and I here in the studio to break down everything that just happened in your game. Let's not get too carried away by the stats in the first half, but it is noteworthy. Less than six yards per pass attempt. Now, we talk to coaches around the country. They always want those explosive plays, big chunk plays. Not getting it in this game might be an indication there's not really that deep threat that strikes fear into the defense on the outside. Uh, the, the hardest thing for a corner is always facing a speedster, facing somebody that can stretch the field because then it makes you backpedal and really makes you, you know, take away that deep ball first and bail out of there. And then sometimes it opens up the underneath stuff where you give a cushion to a receiver. So I think the offense has to find playmakers. They got to find ways to take shots, run some different routes to find some creative ways to get some guys open because right now, the little dink and dunk stuff isn't working. You're not threatening me down the field. I don't need to cover the whole field. We're bringing everybody up near the line of scrimmage and just taking away the short stuff. David and I will be keeping an eye on your game and everything else going on in the country here in our palatial and comfortable surroundings in the studio. The best seat in the house belongs to Brad Nessler and Kirk Herbstreit. All right, Reese and David, thanks, guys. Second half action, just about ready to start here. McCall takes it at the eight, gets out to about the 31. This offense is just going to be kicking themselves. They're moving the ball very well. In fact, they're getting into their opponent's territory. Only problem is they're not finishing off the drives with touchdowns. They're having to settle for field goals. That could eventually catch up to them. This deficit can be easily overcome, sure. But they have to be thinking if they don't get something going on this series, the burden is going to be felt by their defense. Fires out to his receiver. He's tackled at about the 39 yard line. That makes it second and two. Makes it out to maybe the 40 yard line. From the 25 yard line, second down. Gets it to his wide receiver, and he's got another one. And they push him out right around the six yard line. Should the offense go for the two-point conversion? It's still only the third quarter, so this is a very debatable call. They'll line up with five wide receivers. The Cavalry's coming. They got it. 
A nine play 69 yard drive and they add eight to the scoreboard after that successful two point conversion. You know Brad a lot of times you have to watch practice and watch a seven on seven drill to not see the ball touch the ground. This time they went the entire length of the field. The ball never touched the ground. Great execution by the quarterback and receiver. We're deadlocked right now at 14. Robinson fields at the goal line at the 30 across midfield inside the 30 the 10 he's all the way home touchdown when a guy like this gets into the open field it's pretty much game over if you're trying to catch him you kind of had that feeling he was going to do something big today and that's exactly what he did right there He makes the PAT. Bryant looks ready to kick this one off. Lee fields it at the three. Breaks it, and he's got the corner. Gets out to about the 21. Kirk, not sure what went on in the locker room at halftime, but both offenses have really come ready to play in the third quarter. I think that's really what separates a good team from a great team, is being able to make the adjustments at halftime and then come out and, and being able to execute. And so far, we've seen both these offenses able to do that. Six points and a pretty display of passing was a result of their last drive. Kirk, do you expect the defense to take a different approach here? When this quarterback is on, he is on. It already seems like whatever this defense is trying just isn't working. But maybe if they add just a little bit more pressure, then they might be able to force him into a mistake. From their own 21-yard line, second down. He's taken down right around the 36-yard line. it out maybe to the 26 yard line call it a gain of one yard third down so it's third down now and they're going to need about four stays in bounds and made a nice catch i like the call here by the defense to bring the heat with the outside linebacker it was just a better call by the offense and that's why it's a first down. And he's hit immediately. point in an attempt to tie the game. And he adds
adds the extra point. Let's see if they decide to kick it to him again. And he got all of this one. Great kick. And it goes into the end zone, down for a touchback. I think it says something about the quality of the preparation of both teams that we're into the third quarter and nobody's been able to pull away. Both sides seem to know what to expect. Finds his man and they take him down immediately. That'll make it second and four. They'll spread the field here. Let's see what the defense does with a five wide outlook. He's tackled at the 43. That's a deal of 12 on the play. That makes it first and 10. Five wide. Five wide. He fights forward to about the 46. Try and scramble. And he's leveled at the 43 yard line. They come out on an empty backfield. Now he tries to buy some time. for the corner he's at the 30 scrambles again and he shoved out of bounds at the 18 yard line so at the end of the third quarter got a stalemate right now 21 apiece into the fourth quarter now and we're back to the action He scrambled, heading for the corner, slides down to the ground, and he just slid down to avoid the contact there. You know, Brad, sometimes a quarterback's got to get down low to protect himself, but in this case, try to show some guts, break a tackle and get downfield, look for the first down. Makes the catch, and the defense is all over him. They bring him down for a loss. to go. Ball on the 18-yard line. They'll bring him down at the 21-yard line. And they back up three yards on that play. Really, they just had nowhere to go after the catch. So the field goal unit is on the field. They'll try for three points. It's up, and he got it. And with that, all the pressure now shifts back to the other side. That's what a good kicker can do. Bryant ready to kick. Lee from the 
the two. And he makes it out to about the 21-yard line. Things aren't tied, but they might as well be. It's this drive that could really dictate the tone for the last quarter. With a quick throw. And down he goes at the 45-yard line. It and he's hit hard immediately. That makes it second and ten. Zips it to the back. Tackle at the 50 yard line. Loss of five there. This defense is fast enough that they can create negative yards on completed passes. So the offense might want to consider that next time they try that play. Third down, and they need to get it down to the 35. I got eight. I got eight. I got eight. I'm coming. I'm coming. Down. Most complete big loss. Number 31 takes him down for a loss behind the line at the 45 yard line. That makes it fourth and long. Gaddis is the punter. Smith fields it at the 19, and down he goes at the 29-yard line. Both teams realize that when the ball is snapped, we're one play away from a very different ball game. Just over two minutes in the game. Houston's going to take their first time out of the half. The option keeper gets him two, maybe three yards. When you've got the experience that this safety has, you can read plays very quickly and be in just the right position to make a stop near the line of scrimmage. There's a strike complete. He's tackled around the 36-yard line. Three, maybe four yards on the pass. You don't have to throw it deep to have success. Any sort of completion can help boost an offense's confidence. Third down, and they're going to need about three yards to pick up the first down. Two, Throws complete, and he's got space to work. And they make the stop, the 39-yard line. The defense is there to defend the pass, but we're still unable to stop them from picking up enough yards to move the chains. Makes it out to about the 49. That's good for the game of 10 yards. That brings up second and one. It's second down now, and they're just a few feet away from that first down marker. He makes it out to midfield. That makes it first and ten. We should just see the quarterback take a knee right here, winding down the rest of this clock. If you're an offensive coordinator, you love this play. His quarterback will take a knee. Second down, about 12 yards to go. Ball on the 47-yard line. And he'll just take a knee here to kill the clock. Really great game to watch. Both teams should be proud of their efforts in this one. 24-21, Aggies. That brings this broadcast to a close.
for EA Sports and Kirk Herb Street. I'm Brad Nessler. We'll see you soon for another edition of NCAA Football 14.